Hello, my name is Kevin. And I am Daniel. We would like to welcome you to Youth Sunday at the New Beginning Church. We are so glad you chose our church to praise the Lord's name with us. To our online family and friends, and our first time worshipers, we say welcome. Your presence is truly a blessing, and we look forward to you helping us praise the Lord. Again, we say welcome.
nada más. Cuídanos a los que están enfermos, sálanos por favor. Y con toda esta enfermedad, en la escuela los niños, cuídanos que no les pasa nada malo. Y te pedimos que hoy lo envíes para que todo salga bien y que te podamos seguir alabando. En el nombre de Jesús. drums. Did you know that playing the drums makes you smarter? Research has shown that playing the drums helps your brain synchronize both the left and the right hemispheres. Even our Bibles tell us to praise the Lord with dancing and playing the drums. At this time, we will play the drum selection called Black Light Lagoon.
Thank you so much. That was Black Light in the Lagoon. I saw one person smiling. Did y'all see that one person smiling? Who was that? It was Edith. Thank you, Edith, for smiling. Okay, we're going to see who's going to smile on the next song. The Zara Fall Ensemble will play a selection called The Shadow. Listen as we show our concentration skills in playing this selection in a round. Now we present The Shadow. All right, Gilbert. All right. Come on, baby. Lennox is just three years old, but she's going to play today. All right. Okay, she's going to play right here. <laughs>
And we thank God for our youth and our young people. Well, we thank God for our youth and our young people. God has blessed us one more again. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. He has blessed us one more again. And for that, we're just thankful. They said the drums make you smart. I think I'm going to start beating the drums. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise God for you, the young people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I said hallelujah, hallelujah. Young people got what we don't have. They can think faster than we can think. They can move faster than we can move. And certainly they can play and sing better than we can play and sing. Thank you, young people, for being a blessing to us today. Thank you for being such a blessing to us today. We thank you. We appreciate you. We glorify God for you. You have been a blessing in this room today. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I want to thank Sister Davis and her team for, for putting energy. Some people don't have the energy to put it to young people. Thank you for putting the energy in. For making a difference in young people's lives, and these young people are making a difference in our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank God for who he is and what he's already done. He has blessed us here this morning. If you don't mind, would you stand for the reading of God's word? We want to look at two verses in 1 Corinthians. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. In the New Testament, it is 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Verses 13 and 14. Young people really, really did it, laid it out to prepare for this message today. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. When you found it, you will discover these words. Watch. Stand fast in faith. Be brave. Be strong. Let all you do be done with love. In this series called Loving God, I want to use for a subject, Loving God in Faith. You may be seated. Loving God in Faith. I've concluded that if we get to a point where we love God, then all the things that God asks of us will be no problem. When you love somebody, when you when you really care for one, first of all, you want to spend time with him or her or with them. When you really, really love somebody, it's not just lip service. It is called doing some things. It's just like we as, as Christians, we, we say we love God. The late Pastor Manson Johnson would say it like this, God is not as concerned about your hallelujah as he is concerned about your duty All right. So hallelujah is good. It is what God wants. It is what God desires. It is what God tells us to do. And that is praise him for who he is. Yes, sir. And we ought to praise God for who he is even if we don't get what we want. I, I know folk that I know not in this room, but in other rooms all over this country. Uh, there are people who only pray when they need something. There are individuals who only call on God and only dialogue with God when they're asking him to go here and do that. Even in our missionary work, we, we stand and we ask God, we kneel and we ask God, and we send God to the hospital. We send God to the prison. We send God to visit the sick and the homeless and the hungry. But the fact of the matter is, God has told us, as the children has informed us this morning, we ought to go and not send God. Right. And because God has called us, the, the last song says it like this. He is calling. He is calling out. See, let me just stop right here and let you know, just because you hear God calling, doesn't mean he's calling you to preach. I think I'll say that a couple more times. Just because God is calling you doesn't mean that God is calling you to preach. Right. Right. 
Because God is calling you. Because God is pointing you out. Because God is calling on you. Doesn't mean that God is calling me to preach. First of all, he's calling us to get our lives right with him. Amen. Secondly, he's calling us to go and do something for somebody else. And he's also calling us to make sure we stay in close contact with him simply because God tells us and teaches us as we mature to in him. Yes, sir. So when we look at this series, Loving God, as we move toward loving God and as we move in loving God, we got to be about God's business. I want to serve notice on you this morning if you haven't heard any preacher say it. I want to serve notice on you the fact that the matter is time is winding out. I'm telling you, time is winding up for both the young and the seasoned. Yes. I mean, time is winding out, and people have come to a conclusion in their lives where they got it made, they got it going on, and they can relax and don't do anything. But I want to tell you, time is winding up. Yes, time is winding out. Our brother Whitlock did an elegant job in proclaiming to us this morning and letting us know that the last days are upon us. We are living ever since Jesus rose from the dead. We need to understand the last days are present. Yes, sir. Uh, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, you can tell when the last days are present when men are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. You can tell when we're in the last days when men will be more in love with the creature than the creator. You can tell when we're in the last days when there's unnatural affection. We are in the last days. Time is winding out. Yes, sir. I dare tell you today, I tell, tell you today, I believe, and I'm not a fortune teller. I believe that I have more behind me than I have in front of me. Yes, sir. 60 years old. Hallelujah. Clap for that. I'm 60 years old. I made it, and it's not that I made it, but God enabled me to make it. And I believe that I got, I have more years behind me than I have in front of me. Therefore, time is winding up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How, how you know time is winding up? It, it, it's winding up because, it's winding out because, it's winding down because, because we see men that will do in and everything, and they will shoot you for blowing at them. They, they, will, they will slap you because of your ethnic color. Right. They, will, they will call call you out of your name because they don't just like, they don't like the way you look. Right. Right. Let me tell you, time is winding up. Right. We got to love God. We have to love God in such a way that it's not phony love. Yeah. Right. It's not church love. Yeah. You know how church love, don't you? When Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, Paul talks about giving each other a holy kiss. Our kiss in our local churches today are not holy kiss. Right. Right. Our, our hugs are not holy hugs. I know at this church we do the holy hug thing. I know we mean well. I know we have the right motive. But the fact of the matter is you can tell and visitors can tell and people you see can tell when you just faking it till you make it. Yeah. We got that church bump going on. And we out. We, 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 well, Roscoe, we got it. And we out. We've done our deed for the day. We can check that box off. Wow. Wow. But when you really, really, really love somebody, you will find a way, first of all, to get in touch with them. You, you're going to get in touch with them. And God has allowed social media and allowed telephones to make it so easy. We walk around with computers every day. Yes, sir. I mean computers this side, that side. We walk around with computers every day. I mean the laptop is old school. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about iPads are old school. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about walking around with a telephone that not only dial the number that you want, but it can put you on the world wide web in an instance. Right. Right. It can become dangerous to us. It is dangerous because you can say any and everything to anybody all in a living swoop. Yeah. You know, I used to wonder, I used to wonder how the Bible is gonna come true when it says that every eye will see him. Yeah. The Bible says when Jesus cracks the sky, 
every eye will see him. The Bible says that those who died with this lie and hope in him, that believe in this gospel story of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Bible says that every eye will see him, and those who are dead will be caught up in minutes. Yeah. And those of us that's blessed enough to be still walking, we will meet them in midair, but we will not go before those who are dead. Yes, that's why Paul says to be absent from the body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Let me tell you, I got it going on. Ever since May 6, 1980, in Miss Bonner's sixth period class, I've been having it going on because if I die, I die in Christ. Amen. If I live, I live in Christ. If I go through burdens, I go through burdens in Christ. That's why Paul says this present day suffering is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, I got it going on. Do you have it going on? Do you have it made? Are you still holding out to please yourself? Are you still holding out to please somebody else? Let me tell you, I got it made. So when they stress me out, cross here, wherever they stress me out, whenever my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth, whenever they fold my hand in service, you know undertakers know how to do it, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> when they fold my hand in service and, and they speak over me for the very last time, don't worry about me. Yeah. I'm on my way to Beulah Land. I'm on my way to Old Zion. I'm on my way up to heaven. I'm on my way to meet the righteous king of God. That's why folks say, oh, when I get over there, I'm going to see Annie Mae. When I get over there, I'm going to see Bob. I'm not looking for Annie Mae. I'm not looking for Bob. I'm not looking for big mama, grandmama. I'm not looking for granddaddy. I'm looking for the one who died for me on a skull hill called Calvin. His name is Jesus. Now, I am, I am homiletically incorrect. I don't supposed to raise my voice in the first 10 minutes, you know. You're supposed to just talk it out. And, and, and homiletics, you're just supposed to talk it out in your introduction. And then when you get in your body, every now and then you make your three points and you may raise your voice then. And when you get to your, your conclusion, you ought to supreme But check this out. When you're talking about Jesus, you may not make it to the body. You may not make it to the conclusion. You ought to give him praise and give him glory where you are right now. Paul says, whatever you do, you know that you can make personal plans. And when you make personal plans, you need to understand that God himself has the timetable. God has our name. And, and see, forget about God calling your number. God knows your name. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you have the same name as the next person to you. God knows how to distinguish from one to the other because God made you. He's waiting. He's waiting on you. He's calling out. He's waiting on you. So when we love God and we say we love God, how many people in the room love God? How many, how many of you love God? How many you love God? I mean, we got a room full of folk that love God. The, the songwriter says, and the children, children have repeatedly over and over said to us this morning that we can change the world. Yes, the, the children said, together we can make a difference. To, together we can change the world. And he says that they said that God is calling out. I mean, they ministered to us today, and I only only request I made for the music today is just don't put the drum before I get up. <laughs> And they, they chose the right song simply because God is calling out. Yes, he is. God is reminding us that we can make a, make a difference. Why will you still on planet Earth? Uh -huh. Yes. Sir. How are you still breathing? How are you still have blood being pumped to one part of your body to the other? Why is it you that God has chosen to, to be here one more minute? It's because God had an assignment for you. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the devil will always try to cancel your assignment. But God has an assignment for you. Make yourself available to God. Look at what he says in verse number 13. He says, watch. watch. He says, watch. And when you use the word watch here, he's talking about the watches of the night. Mm -hmm. In the Jewish calendar, they didn't have 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They had watch 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
So when he uses this word watch, he's saying you are anticipating of an a event to take place. And when you watch, you're looking for something to happen. Yeah. Let me tell you, whatever you praying for now, don't stop praying now because you ought to be anticipating it. Yeah. Yeah. You ought to be making preparation for it. Yeah. You ought to make sure that you have your antennas up, yeah. waiting on it. One more talks about how he was laid off work and he was down on his knees praying. And he, when he was down on his knees praying, he, he prayed, God, give me a job. I've applied for this job. I've applied for this job. And the phone rang. Now, you sanctified Christians would have stayed on your knees. You really, really holy folk would have stayed on your knees. Now, they didn't have cell phones during this time. This is in the mid-80s. Let me tell you, the brother jumped up and got on the phone. He stopped talking to God and realized the victory of God because God will meet us where we are, when we need it, how we need it, the way we need it. And he will fix it even while we're calling on it. Brother jumps up, he answers the phone, and the woman says, hey, this is Human Resources from HYZ Company, and I want you to show up Monday morning. We have orientation set up for you. You have backed out. What if he had stayed on his knees? Right. Right. Let me tell you, God is asking us to watch. Yes, this word watch means you're anticipating. It means to stay alert. It means to keep on watching. It means to stay awake. Too many people are sleeping too late in the day, and God is doing some great things early in the morning. God, God is doing some things early in the morning, and he's doing it right like he won't do it in the middle of the day. Yes, sir. If you ask Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas would tell you it was at the first start of the morning. Paul and Silas would tell you, we were, we were locked up in a prison, and while we were in prison, we did what we know to do, and they were praying and praising the God. The Bible says at midnight, you see, midnight is not yesterday and not tomorrow. Midnight, in the middle of the morning, in the middle of the night, God shows up, and the jailhouse did rock, and they were set free. Do you want to be set free for something this morning? Do you want Do you want God to bless you real good? And He's been a planet. You better get up from there. You need to move right now. You need to watch for something. You need to anticipate, anticipate a victorious future. You need to keep alert. You need to keep watching because God is looking and calling yeah. for you. Yes, sir. Says stay awake. Watch. What watch means to be on God, uh -huh. to be diligent yes. in the will of the Lord. Yes, sir. To be on God, to, to make sure that you keep your heart right. Make sure you keep your deeds right. Make sure you walk uprightly. Make sure you are a godly example as you're watching somebody is watching you. These children, these children today, they know how to play music because they watch the director. They, they, they know how to hit the notes because they, they listen to the instructions. They know how to handle themselves in church because they watch us handle ourselves in church. Now, don't you think that you are not being watched because there are people who are grown and people who are young that are watching you. Right. You're not Charles Barkley. You can't, you can't declare that, that I'm, I'm not a role model. The moment you came out of the womb, you became a role model. My sisters and my brothers talk about me all the time, but that's all right. They said, boy, when you were born, you were so ugly, nobody kissed you but mama. Yes, sir. Yes, they say you had hair all over you. You had hair like a monkey. You looked like a monkey. You act like a monkey. They said, now, 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 this is the problem. Come on. Brother Zoran, this is the problem. Come on. Right. I'm the oldest. Yeah. <laughs> they got all this information. And they declaring all this about me and they weren't even thought of yet. They weren't even on the scene yet. I want to stop by to let you know that folk will criticize you that don't even know you. People will say they got your number that don't even, they hadn't even signed up in the line. There are people who think they are watching you and have watched you that wasn't even on the scene then. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that court, they call it hearsay. So every time my brothers and my sister raise that argument, I just look at them and smile. And that, let me just drop by and let you know, as you watch, you don't have to defend yourself. Right. Right. They, they go back and they say, look, look at this picture, boy. Look at you. 
Look what you look like. Look at it. They said I had more hair in a baby than I have right now. I just said, God bless them a whole heap of plenty. Bless them. I said, they just want to be first. <laughs> they, 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 they just want to be the oldest. <laughs> but God has favored me. And God has, so you have to be watchful. Be watchful. Be watchful. And then, then, then Paul says, stand fast in the faith. This is coming up to Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. Men, women, boys, and girls have given their lives that we can have the freedom we have. Men, women, boys, and girls all over the world have, have run into a dangerous spot. They have run into burning buildings while others are running away. They were running into foxholes while others were safe. Yes, sir. Men, women, boys, and girls uh, were running into things and they gave the ultimate sacrifice just for us. Just for us. We won't even fly a flag yeah. on their behalf. We won't even, we, we get caught up in barbecue, we get caught up in the game, we get caught up in everything about us, and we forget those who have sacrificed their lives for us. We ought to thank God today that they play the ultimate role in our lives. Brings me to my next point. He says, stand. stand. They stood in the face of danger. Yeah. Yes, sir. They stood in the face of our having luxury and they living outside. They stood at a point where they knew the possibility of them losing their life was a reality. Yeah. You know, when I was in high school, Brother Zimmerman, I was in high school. They would come around Army, Navy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Marines. They would come around high school and they would make you all kind of promises. They would tell you, you're going to see the world with us. We're going to pay for your education. And they, they going, they going, we're going to take you to any part of the world that you want. You want to go to Japan? We'll ship you off the day after graduation. We will ship you off to Japan. Yes, sir. They paint a very flowery picture of ease. And they talk about, oh, you're going to retire with the best benefits in the whole world. Right, right. Let me tell you, young folk, when you start, sign up for the military, mm -hmm. these things may happen, but they are not first priority. Right. These things may take place within your 30 years of, of enrollment. These things may happen sooner or later, but when you sign up in the military, you're signing up to fight. Right. You, you, you don't sign up in the military just to go and relax and lay up on the beach and hang out and do things and travel the world. These things may happen, but you sign up to go fight. The Apostle Paul says to us today, as there is false doctrine all around us, we got to take a stand in this thing. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. He says, he says in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, he says there's a war going on. And it's not, it's not a flesh and blood war. It's a war in the higher epsilon. It's, there's a war going on in the higher realm. There, there's a war going on in the middle of things we can't see. Young boy, young girl, really realize that mama may be old fogey, daddy may be old fogey, but they understand there's a war going on. And this war is not being played out on Facebook. No. This war is not on Twitter. This, this war is not on email. This war is not on the website. This war that's going on is in heavenly places. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The devil wants to sift you. He wants to sift you as, as sifting wheat. I mean, young people are so brilliant. I mean, they just amaze me. I wasn't that brilliant. When I grew up. I mean, they are brilliant. You see people stand here and they are able to transfer between one language to the other and say the same thing with two different groups of people that's, my goodness, my God, have mercy. Yeah. 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 I'm getting there one day. But I got more time behind me than I got in front of me. He says to stand. He says, make sure whatever you do, stand. And when you stand, you need to stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stand in faith. 
I know there's some new stuff out there. I know there are the black Israelites out there. Yeah. And they're telling you your blackness will keep you sane. Your, your blackness will, will be what you're all about. I know they want to change your name and tell you who you are. Let me tell you, just like Never Jack Never did, they change your name and they change your music. Yes, sir. Uh, young folk, when I grew up, music was real music. I mean, we could understand the words. And when I grew up, music, you could, it, it didn't talk about no woman's clothes. It, it talked about, baby, how much I love you. When, when music was music, it talked about, you are my world, you are my everything. When music was mu music, he said, turn out the light. You are so special to me. Women appreciated love, soul, peace, and happiness. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The devil will get you through your music. Yes, sir. He will change your name. Yep, yep, yep. He will make it where you can't stand because you are all in an illusion of what's going on around you. Right. Children these days get upset and have low self-esteem because they don't get enough likes. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when I grew up, I, I went to an all-white college mm -hmm. yes, sir. in Mississippi. Yes, sir. I think I'll say that again. I don't think anybody got it. I said I went to an all-white college in Mississippi. When I went to orientation that Friday, I went to orientation, and I was sitting in the room, and I was just looking around the room. Yes, sir. I noticed that I was the only fly in a bowl of milk. Yes, sir. Well, you all, that's not from the country. You don't understand. I understood real quickly I was the only black person in the whole room. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I went home, and I told Mama, I was like, Mama, I'm the only brother in the world. Mm, yes. And this is one thing she said to me that stayed with me to this day. Uh -huh. She said to me, it doesn't matter who else is in electronics. Come on. Come on. Whatever they can do, you can do better. I realized right then, I mean, I put it, I put that in my heart. Now it's on my shoulder. Now it's in my head. Anything that anybody else can do, I can do better. Matter of fact, I don't have to compare myself to anybody else. All I have to do is stand on what God has made me to be. Just stand. Just, just stand. You are that color because God made you that color. You are that shape because God made you that shape. I mean, I used to pray. I used to pray, God. I mean, on Saturday, I mean, I was honestly praying. I was diligently, Lord, give me 20 more pounds. Lord, give me 20 more pounds. Here I is 40 years later. Lord, Lord, take 20 pounds. Lord, will you please take 20 pounds? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But whatever size you are, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, God knew it before you got there. Yes, and whatever God has paid you, you see, I did have had one time. Yes, sir. And I learned how to appreciate my past. Yeah. Because I can use whatever grease and formula, I can use implants or whatever it takes. It is gone for good. It has left the building. Yes, sir. It is gone. I mean, I used to shake my afro and I used to get it planted and my pants was that long and I used to lay it down. I used to go to Miss Johnny May Weeks' house. She was, she was Roosevelt Weeks' sister and, and she, would, she would braid all our hair. Yes, sir. And she would braid it and we would step out yeah. during the week with our hair on and on the weekend we would pick it out. I had a pick this long in my yeah. 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 Took the pick. I mean, the pick was a lifesaver. Yeah. Right. Right. And we didn't have our hair pulled everywhere when, when, when I was born. I mean, it was shaped like a round steel. Yeah. I mean, everything was in shape. And let me tell you, I can't find that spear anywhere anymore. Yes, God has a way of blessing you even in your worst conditions. Yes, and if you're concerned, women, men, boys, and girls, if you're concerned about your hair, you got some other things in your life you ought to be concerned about. Yes, if you're concerned about how you look, you got some things you ought to be concerned about. I mean, there are better things in the way you look. God knows how you look. It is your look that's going to make a difference to everybody else. Yes, sir. I mean, I use my, my bald head for a conversation piece to get me in the door. Yes, sir. I mean, I, 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 see, I see young people with those hairstyles. The first thing I say, hey, you think I can get, uh, get hair like yours? And they start laughing. <laughs> Oh man, now I got their attention. Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. And you are 
understand that God has positioned you where you are and you need to stand where you are and be proud of what God has done to you. All of us have had some mistakes. All of us have followed the ball. Bible says in Romans 3 and 23, we all have sinned. We all have fallen short. We all have missed the glory. All you got to do is get up and put your stuff on and get up about it again. Yes, sir. Stop worrying about stuff that really doesn't matter. Trying to please people that don't even like you. Yes, sir. Trying to hang out with folk and go places where you ought not be. Yes, Just communicate with God. Stand. He says, stand in faith. Right. Yes, sir. This, this, word, this word stand means to be firm, to stand firm. Don't do any wavering. Whatever you do, make sure you stay focused and stand. It says, be solid in what you stand on. Yes, sir. You know, it, it's tragic. It's tra tragic that children grow up in Sunday school, Bible study. Church worship, they learn Jesus, and all of a sudden they go off to college and they come back smart and everybody else. Mm -hmm. The same, Big Daddy would say, the same bridge that took me over mm -hmm. is the same bridge that's going to keep me. Yes, Let me break that down for the city folk. If it's the gospel that have gotten you saved, mm -hmm. it is the gospel that's going to keep you saved. Yeah. It, it's not going to be what you do. It's not going to be how you handle yourself. It's not going to be any group that you connect yourself to. You need to make sure that you stand because your degree won't get you to heaven. No, sir. Your degree won't get you favor with God. No, sir. Your friends won't get you blessed. No, sir. But what you have to do is stand in the faith that you've been taught. This word faith is pistis in the Greek. This word faith means total reliance on God. Let me tell you, when you're totally relied on God, you don't put in your two cents. Let me tell you, I've been to a place in my life where I didn't have two cents to put in. Yes. I had to totally rely on God. As I stand before you today, if God does not click my brain, pump my blood, I will be a vegetable in a second. Yes, sir. But I give glory to God. Yes, the one who keeps me. The one who blesses me. And I'm going to stand in faith to the one who I trust in. I totally have trust in God. Amen. My degrees won't get me there. My money that I used to have won't get me there. My house I live in won't get me there. My wife can't get me there. My children can't get me there. My, my dogs that I don't have can't get me there. My fish that I do have can't get me there. Only God can bless me. Only God. And only God can keep me. Yes, so God, this word faith means surety. This word faith means I don't have to question it. Mm. The devil should have killed me while he had me. Mm. Because now, I'm on fire for the Lord. Yes, anybody on fire for the Lord? Anybody, anybody at a point in your life where, where, where the devil should have taken you while he had you? Yes. He was playing games with me and now God has blessed me. Yes. He's walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own and he encourages me. I, I'm sure now. My, my faith is, is, is sure now. I, I, and, and check this out. The same God who watches over me is the same God that disciplines me. See, see, young people believe that you don't love me because you tell me no. Young people believe you don't love me because you discipline me. The Bible says that God disciplines those and chastens those whom he loves. Amen. Whenever a person who loves you stop correcting you, get them signed. Whenever a person get to a point where they let you do whatever you want to do, you ought to be concerned. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 1, he says that God turns you over to a reprobate mind. That means go on and do whatever you want to do. It was dangerous back in the country when they said, okay, that's what you want to do? Go on then. Go on, go on do what you want to do. Just, just, what they're saying is, I have taken my hands off you. Yeah. What they're really saying is go and kill your own self. Yeah. What they're really saying, you're acting stupid because you are stupid. You need to always be on the hedge of protection. And what I've done, I've taken my hands off. Lord, yeah. Lord, yeah. You ought to get concerned when they said, go on, go on, go on, go on do what you want to do. I guess y'all would say, go on here. When, when the senior saint said, 
Go on, do what you're gonna do. Yeah. They through with you. Yeah. And guess what? You need them before they need you. Amen. I'm telling you, you're gonna need them because they have a big mama had less than a third grade education, but she had connections with God. Yes, sir. And when she called on God, things happened that I couldn't get to happen for myself. Even today, when mama tells me to sit down somewhere, I, I go and sit down somewhere simply because she got connection with God. And the last thing I want mama to say today is, go on, do what you want to do. The last thing I want mama to do is take her prayers away, to, to not pray for me. Let me tell you, when somebody is taking care of you and praying for you, you ought to rejoice because God has placed them in your midst. Take a stand. Have faith. Have faith in God. Then he says, Paul says, be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Be brave. Now, in the King James Version, he says, quick. Or quit, quit like men. What he's saying is there were men in these days who were walking in the commandments of the Lord. But then when the false prophets got a hold of them, they would be crying out in the street. What King James is saying to us this morning is that we need to quit like men. In other words, don't be like those men who mumbles and cry and complain every time the devil gets on the trail. He says, quit like men. And when you quit like men, you need to understand that you need to be brave. You know, stop crying and weeping bitterly in the street. Some people will whine about everything. Yes, they will cry about everything. Yes, sir. Is this looking good enough? Go ask the, the, go go ask Facebook. Mm. <laughs> well, you think this will work for me? Go on, do what you want to do. Mm. We cannot complain. The Apostle Paul says to us, even today, that God is not pleased with mummering. Right. He's not pleased with us. Balling our lips up and frowning our faces. Yes, sir. In my generation, I'm the last generation that, that was devastated when you frown in your face. Mm. Brothers and sisters, we couldn't say, oh. Mm. You're right. It's a, what? 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 Yes, sir. what? Yes, sir. I, I remember standing outside on the carport. Mama, mama just told us all the time, what you do is when I get back here, I want this house in the carpoids to smell like pure rits and pine salt. Y'all call it bleach. She said, when I get back here, I want this house to smell like pure rits and pine salt. She didn't tell us what to pick up. She didn't beg us to get it done. She said, when I get back here, it's going to smell like pure rits and pine salt. And guess what? After mama drove those 30 miles back home from work, yes. before she walked in the back door, she could smell the Purex and pine salt. Yeah. And let me tell you, boys, we had three boys before we had a little girl. And guess what? We washed dishes. We right. swept the floor. We mopped the floor. We washed the clothes. Right. I mean, I'm telling you today, the reason why I don't, I don't like snakes, uh -huh. because I've been on a bandana to get back to snakes. I mean, I run across the field to catch up with a snake to kill it. Mm. <laughs> I, I'm watching. I'm, I'm washing clothes, right. and at that time, Sister Henry, they had the, the the clothes ringer that you run your clothes through, and there's a little round roller on it. And those two little round rollers, where you run the clothes through. And one time, I got my hand stuck in there and rolled through, and that little cheap ring I had on it just crushed it right there. <laughs> But the reason why I don't like snakes is because when we were washing, we would wash clothes, and when we was finished washing, you have to dump it out before it starts to rinse. Yeah. And then you dump the clothes out, but in order to dump the clothes out, you had to reach down there and pull the lever up. And that lever would dump the water, and there they had cleared the hose that were running out off in the field somewhere. I reached down to dump the clothes, and upside the walls stood a four-foot snake. Yes, sir. He tried to take me out. He tried to get my hand. I was so shaken up, I had to call my younger brother to kill the snake. I was messed up. But ever since that day, every snake, you better not have a snake around me. Every snake I see is on like popcorn. I, 
I mean, I killed the snake, and when they they, they said, well, what kind of snake? Oh, man, you don't get any credence for that. You just killed a, John, a brass snake. No, he's a dead snake. If I see him before he sees me, he's a dead snake. I've been on a fight for a snake ever since that snake almost been there. What I'm saying to you is, you must make sure that you stand firm yeah. on what you've been taught. Yeah. What you I know there's new stuff out there. I know things are going on around you that people think that they're bringing on the scene, but there's nothing new under the sun. Oh. The King James said, quit like men, stop acting like them, and be brave. Yeah. That's what be brave means to stop the bitter weeping. Be strengthened. Be mighty. Be strong. And be mature. Amen. Yeah. One of the worst statements a church folk can make, a church person can make. You just got to take me just like I am. I'm just me. That tells me, number one, you're not really ready to grow. And anything that's not growing is dead. And, and, and then it tells me that you are so selfish, you want to impose your will on my will. Because when you get to a point where you don't grow, it affects people around you. And so what we have to do is make sure that we're ready to mature. Learn everything you can learn. Get your education now. Make sure that God is blessing you right now. Because God has a way of blessing you when you're young and he can't bless you when you're old. And it's more to your lack of blessing than your habit. It's more to lack of blessing than your footsteps getting shorter. Let me tell you, young people, you will not be able to do later what you're doing now. So you must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. I want to say that two more times. You must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. You must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. You can't hang out with them. You can't spend time with them. You have to stand and be brave enough to take a stand and mature. Next thing he says, whatever you do, be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Be so strong until you are able to be strong in the worst case conditions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You don't have to scream it out. You don't have to holler it out. You don't have to stand on top of the table. But you need to just be strong. Be like the tree. Yes, sir. Planted by the river of water. And if it's not your time yet, stay planted. Stay planted by the river of water because in due season, the author says, yes, you shall give forth fruit. In due season, is it your season yet? If it's not your season, just stay planted. And as you're still planted, God sends whatever you need right there in the water. There's nourishment in the water. There's supplies in the water. Everything you need, God will bring it to you. He says, be strong, be strong. Just stand, be strong. Winds blow, but you pop right back up. Yes, sir. Trouble takes place. But you pop right back up. Mm -hmm. don't, don't worry about this present day suffering. It is not to be compared to the glory that is yet to be revealed Amen. in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Verse number 14 says, Let all that you do be done with love. Yes, sir. This phrase, be done, means everything that you accomplish. Mm -hmm. Everything that appears. He says, Arise. Let it be done in love. Yes, sir. You can't fake it. No, sir. Let it be done in love. He deals with the fact that we have to not only love God, but we have to love our fellow man. Right. So this, this form of love is both agape love mm -hmm. and filial love or filial love. It is brotherly love. I told you last week, it is the love where, where the city of Philadelphia was named. Yes. We got to look out for each other. Right. One of the songs that they sing in this church is, I love you. you love 
I need you. Yeah. You need me. Right. We got to look out for each other. I won't harm you, yeah. and you won't harm me. Mm -hmm. right. We got to look out for each other. Yes, sir. Right. We have to, he says, whatever you do, do it in love. This form of love is a deep affection for God. Mm -hmm. It is a deep affection of others. And it dictates how we treat other people. He says, I won't hurt you. And I'm trusting that you won't hurt me. Right. Together, we can make a difference. We can change the world. Yes. We just got to support each other. Yes, sir. It, it doesn't matter what color you are. No, sir. Focus on what matters. Right. Doesn't matter how tall you are. Focus on what matters. Doesn't more matter what country you were born in, what house, what neighborhood you were born to. Focus on what you can do for this world. You need to leave a legacy here when you leave. Yeah. Yeah. What would they say about me? Put them out of here. Would they say I mistreated my wife? Would they say I was mean to the children at New Beginning Church? Will they say that every Sunday I came in, I was grumbling, just hard to deal with? Yeah, yeah. Will they say that I just let that Sister Paul just run all over the place and run all over me? <laughs> but what would they say? What legacy will I leave? leave? Yes, sir. Today, young people, you have an opportunity to leave a legacy. Mm -hmm. You have an opportunity to do some things that no one else has ever done. Oh, Lord. You are special just like you are. Yes. Love the Lord. Love other people. Respect other people. Yes. You are special just like you are. Yes. We need to tell our young people, boy, you special. Boy, yes. girl, you just something else. Yes. You need to tell them there's nobody like you. And there will never be another one of you. Even if you are a twin, there is no one like you. You are near and dear to my heart. Yes. One of the most terrible scenes you can see is a, a, a woman or a man in a grocery store just tearing their children down. Mm -hmm. Tell them what they're not. Mm -hmm. Tell them what they'll never be. But we are the church. And we want children to know that you're the greatest thing on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah. God has put that in you. Yes. You can accomplish anything. Yes. You can be anything you want to be. Yes. You got to put the work in. But you can be anything and anybody you want to be. You don't have to stop where you are. That's why we expect our children to go farther than we go. Amen. We expect our children to do things we've never done. We expect our children to go places we can just dream of. Yes, but they need our encouragement. They need to know that, 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 that we're standing behind them. Yeah. That's why I tell girls all the time, look, just because he's gone, you ought to be clapping your hands and thanking the Lord. Amen. <laughs> you, you ought to say, go on, go on, go on somewhere. Yes. Because God is God. And he can do anything but fail. Yes. Jesus Christ paid that price for us yes, he did. over 2,000 years ago in a skull hill called Calvary. Yes, he, did. he died all the way dead. He, he it wasn't a slew spirit. He died on Calvary. Yes, sir. He died between two thieves just for you. And if somebody tells you they don't love you, just know Jesus loves you so much that he would have died for you if you were the only person on planet Earth. It was not a time that they took his life. He voluntarily laid his life down. They nailed him tight. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. He died between two thieves. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because it didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power in heaven and earth in his hands. That same Jesus that got up third day, that third day, that Sunday morning, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for you and me. That's why we need to confess our sins and tell God we, we are 
sorry for our sin. God, forgive us for our sin. Jesus is making intercession for us. And one of these old days, he's going to practice that. And the dead in Christ shall rise. And those who remain shall be called with him in midair. And we will forever be with the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We're going to show no hell of celebration over there. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed is the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. We're going to show no celebrate over there. The fact that Jesus has come back to rescue us. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Are you on your way? I'm on my way on the other side. But there's no more weeping. No more wailing. No more pain. No more sorrow. Thank God for Jesus. He made a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. The conquering king of God. Jesus himself. You talking about looking for Bob. Forget about that. Relationship down here are different over there. Well, no, I'm going to look for Jesus. He is the son of God. The righteous lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for Jesus. I said, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. He is the conquering king of God. The door of the church is open. The invitation is given. You ought to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't, don't wait till you get it right. You'll never get it right. You got to trust them today. Only Jesus can get it right. I tried to get it right. And I, like Paul said, every time I would to do good, evil is present with me. But when I give it over to Jesus, he keeps me. He strengthens me. He gives me hope. Even in a hopeless situation. Do you need hope today? Just try Jesus. The door is open. Will you come? Come to Jesus just now. He has saved you. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can come by letter. You can come for baptism. You can come by for fellowship. Or you can come for salvation. He will save you. He will save you. Yes, if you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is your moment, this is your opportunity. If you would bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life, and He will change your life. Just tell Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. When we thank God for who he is and what he's already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing, the amazing, the amazing, the amazing God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. It is offering time. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. If you need an envelope, please raise your hand and you will be served. It's time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. We are not doing this summer season. We are only passing out white and blue envelopes. White and blue envelopes. White and blue envelopes goes directly to our church. During this summer season, if you give uh, pastor's love offering that's used to go through the white and red envelopes, uh, we are donating all to the church. So if you are going to give pastor's love offering during the summer months, I'm asking you to give it to the New Beginning Church. Amen. I really appreciate and I really thank you for all of your love, Sean. You know, love is given. Amen. So thank you so much for the privilege of receiving your love and just remember, during these summer months until September 1st, we will not be doing Pastor Love offering. Everything will be going to the New Beginning Church. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. 
We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you for jobs. We thank you for income. We thank you for increase. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us to give one more time. We ask you to bless every giver and bless every gift. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. If you want to give electronically, you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can mail in your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That is P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Let's decide to stand and follow first impressions from the ribs to the front. Bring forth the Lord's tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. From the rear to the front, bring forth the Lord's time to offer your sacrifice again. Come on, Rob. You see, when you get old, you get late. You see what happens when you get old? Brother Silver, I know, I understand. Listening to the Bible and journaling the Bible. We're listening to the Bible and we're journaling the Bible. And some of the members of the church have been able to complete the first quarter. And if you have not completed, keep going until you complete it. Amen. So I want to award this certificate of completion to Brother Raymond Carter. Brother Raymond, Raymond Carter for Brother Raymond Carter for completing the the first quarter of Bible listening and Bible journaling through the Bible. Come on, brother. Let's clap for him. Let's clap for him. Hallelujah. Raymond Alford Jr., Billy Banks, Kevin and Katrina Wedlock, 
Beverly Wallace, Omar Garman, Ed Brandon and family, Joe and Marlene Studevin, Jacqueline Torres, Dorothy Sellers, Neighbors for the Harvest, Protection in Schools, and Robies. you to heal is only you can heal. Bless, Lord, because you know we we know that you are the blessing. Lord, we ask you to deliver. We ask you to address every concern. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to be God in the midst. That sorrows will be removed. That health will be predominant. And that strength will be enabled. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Well, as you notice on our prayer list, we had a person on there last week that's not on the front of that prayer list. Amen. Don't ask Megan Davis to come up and say hello to us. Amen. Playing the drums at school. 
you know, she let me know she was famous at school. <laughs> she got an uh, award for ballet, for math, and for language arts. So let's clap for y'all. <laughs> My little three-year-old. Well, let me tell you about. I gotta tell you about her. Uh, Lennox has been coming to me for the last month, month and a half, and I am just so happy to report that she can move her fingers on the keyboard and do two, three. So that is a major accomplishment. So clap for Lennox. We have an award for somebody that didn't put their name on their paper. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna come back to it. We got for this. All right, our next award is going to go to Ashi. Come on, Ashi. Ashi wants us to know that he got the Sweet Stakes Award at UIL with all ones that ones that's playing his saxophone. Okay, so he made all number one. Also, he was in the Christmas performance at his school. He did the Spring Concert Participation Award. He got Region Band Award, and he also. If the fifth graders went on a tour and played at different schools, and he got an award for that. So that's what I call Basket. 
I am 62 and 7, 8 of years old. So I want you all to continue to learn, boys and girls, all right? You're making us all proud. Thank you. that are here, I want to recognize them because we started having um, music on uh, Friday nights and we're just trying to just get more uh, boys and girls interested in music and I see some more little people in this audience that I'm going to be talking to once we get through, uh, but the parents that come on Friday nights, the new parents, would you please stand so we can see who you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. These are uh, Alexander's parents. Stand up, baby. Yeah. Alexander, so you are so excited. I got you coming to join me in that. So thank you so much. Amen. Hallelujah. I told you, these young folks know how to think. Well, woo! Good God Almighty. Thank God for the young people. Amen. Our visitors, our visitors, you are visiting us for the first time, please stand up and, and say hello to us. And you're visiting with us for the very first time. Say hello to us. And it's a young man that with you all come and introduce everybody. The one that think the, the one on the end, yeah, I'm gonna ask him to come. He used to be young. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Glad to be here. Uh, my dear friend, uh, uh, Latoya, and her 13-year-old, uh, uh, Tamara, and her 7-year-old, um, Alea, and uh, my 7-year-old, Summer. Amen. Uh, have all come today with me, and we came to worship here today. Hello, New Beginnings. Um, I'm not new to coming and sharing with you all. Certainly glad to be here. I, uh, I love Pastor Davis and Sister Davis. And um, I'm, um, I'm asking the Lord to lead me and direct me. I've been following him in his ministry here at New Beginnings. Love everything about you all. And certainly this experience today with the children. And so we're just glad to be here today. And to be here worshiping with you. God bless you. Amen. 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 Thank y'all so much for being here. Please fill out a visitor's card. And uh, I want to get with you and see uh, how did you enjoy uh, your visit with us today. Good to see Deacon Willard Taylor from the Homer Street Tank Church. He is, he is also a co-author with Sharing the Gospel Good News on the Go. He's one of our co-authors. And if you uh, haven't got the book, Sharing the Gospel, Good News on the Go, you need to get one today. Amen. You need to get one today for a very, very special price. Because on Amazon, they are exalted. Amen. It is a book that gives evangelism from 20 different um, perspectives, from 20 different authors. And Brother Willie Taylor and Sister Carolyn Davis are two of those contributing authors. Amen. Why don't we stand to be dismissed? for blessing us. We thank you for surrounding us with miracles. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us and keeping us even in this service. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that we love you because you first loved us. 
We pray that you bless us, Father God, that we will stand firm in your faith. Bless us to always be watchful, Father God, in all that we do. Bless us to be brave. Bless us, Father God, to stand on your word and your word alone. Bless us, Lord, to be courageous and encouraged by you. Bless us and remind us, Father God, that we ought to love other people and we ought to love you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, be glory, be majesty, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. I'll be still in vision. Uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, In I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. You are dismissed.